Okay, I think Mr. Rather just gave us the official go ahead and we have everybody in attendance that's supposed to be here. So we'll get started talking about course registration for next year, which I'm really excited about because that means we've made it through this year. A couple of housekeeping things to keep in mind. If all ELTs, which I think you are already could mute. Um, and then um, if there are questions along the way, students and teachers, if you could write those questions down and then give them to the teacher. And at the end of the presentation, I'll have time to answer questions that way. Also, I wanna let everybody know that this is being recorded and that we have also some individual students through our um, Everest Virtual Academy that have also logged on. So we have a wide variety of audience members. Um, I hope I've got a timer going to keep this under 35 minutes or at 35 minutes, which will allow you time to actually enter your course requests or at least get a good start on them into Infinite Campus once we get through the presentation and any questions. Um, all students should have a nice packet um, with kind of a summary of what you're registering for, a course selection form, a course request worksheet to kind of write things out, like for a sloppy copy, so to speak, a graduate register for courses in Infinite Campus direction sheet. And um, the registering actually in Infinite Campus is the same as it's always been, but that's just for a little refresher. Okay, so moving on. Um, my name is Mrs. Devine. I work with students with the last names of LU through SH. I think most of the ELTs logged on have that last name. If you're not an LU through SH, you can see the other counselors that you are assigned to by last name. Um, at any time during the registration process, if you want to touch base with your counselors or just want someone to double check it, we would welcome you to um, make an appointment or shoot us an email. We're here to double check and help you with those things. Okay. The purpose of today's meeting um, is to make sure that you know what the timeline for registration is. Um, we hold pretty tight and firm to those deadlines because that's tied to the number of classes, the type of classes, and then uh, where our teachers are teaching. So it's, it's tied to a lot of financial things. Um, so we need to keep moving forward with that process. So we're gonna share some pretty important deadlines. Um, you actually, after today's presentation, can start to enter your course requests. We're gonna touch on the graduation requirements. We want all students to know what is required. Um, and then also to have a general idea if you're pursuing any college colleges after high school that you have a general understanding. And because what a college might expect for a mission you should be taking in high school. And again, if you need someone to consult on that, touch base with your school counselor. And then finally, um, share some resources with you about course selections. And then we've got quite a list of new courses um, that we wanna highlight today um, that possibly you might consider taking next year. So that's the goal for today in hopefully um, 35 minutes. So the first big question that you have to answer, um, one of the things the pandemic has brought, brought to our school is we're offering more online classes. And so the purpose of today's presentation is really about in-person classes five days a week next year at the high school. If you are a person who thinks that you didn't want to be five days a week in person, then you might consider what we call EVA, which is Everest Virtual Academy. Today's presentation will not um, give descriptions of what that is. There is a separate WebEx uh, registration for that on April 16th. All students would have received an email on that. So if you'd like to do that, hop on uh, April 16th. The big difference between the two is where your primary placement is, where you have the majority of your classes. If you are gonna attend five days a week next year and take a high school placement, you will also be able to do up to two online courses uh, through course selection sheet under the heading online, but you may only take two of those per semester in the online format because the rest then have to be in person. 
Um, the other option then is the EVA, and it's kind of flipped backwards. If you choose an EVA enrollment, then you are going to be taking um, four, around four classes per semester online, probably in your home, but you may also take two in-person courses at the high school. If you choose to do that option, you are responsible for transportation, and those two courses that you take in, por in person are um, not guaranteed a certain hour. One could be offered first hour and one could be offered 10th hour and we cannot make changes to that. So those are some things to consider. So with that, we're gonna go ahead with information for our high school classes. Um, this, these are important deadlines that we want everyone to be aware of. Um, for 10th grade, we want all of your courses entered into Infinite Campus by April 12th. So we've got a pretty tight turnaround um, because we're getting towards the end of the year, we want to start to get numbers of how many courses we need to offer. So we would like you to be talking with your teachers, talking with your parents, looking at um, career and college um, admission criteria prior to the 12th and having that all input then. April 26th, we will hand you back our email. That will be a listing of the courses that you put in. It's very important that you and your parents look at that because that would be the last moment for any kind of changes. We will do corrections. And if you need corrections on that, you're gonna bring that verification sheet down to um, student services and we'll make those updates. After April 30th, there will be no course changes. Um, and again, that goes back to because we tie it to uh, the financial needs to support the number of classes in each in um, kids are in. Um, and that's firm. So we want to be very clear. You're going to hear that date, April 30th, no changes, quite a bit. The one thing that we're adding this year, we're asking students to do is uh, we're going to try and do your athletic registration into the Infinite Campus portal also at this time. So your ELT teacher has a listing, a separate athletic course selection sheet with the codes for all of the sports. And if you are in, for example, uh, boys basketball, there's a code for that. And we want you to input that into your course request. Um, if you are in three sports, you're gonna put all three sports in. And then that will be the listing for our athletic department to uh, push out information to you about that particular sport. Um, you can also access that athletic uh, course selection form on the senior high website. You'll hear a little bit more about that too. So that's just a little bit as an added thing that we're hoping we can take care of. Um, next up is probably one of the most important slides, which is our graduate DC Evers graduation requirements. I'm going to let you look through look through those. Not going to read through them. Total credits required to graduate is 23.5. Within each um, department area, um, with the exception of electives, um, you must have certain classes, and we'll talk about that in the next slide. But overall, we've got to get all kids to 23.5 credits. A great place for you to track and see where you're at is in your infinite campus. It is on the left hand side. If you click on, I think it's called academic plan, academic plan, you're going to see what your breakdown is uh, for number of credits in each of the departments and how many credits you need to go. So as part of your registration, please go back and look at your academic plan and see where you're at. As always, if you have questions, uh, shoot an email to your counselor or um, make an appointment to see us and we can help you review that. So now um, within those departments and you have a handout. So I guess at this time I'd ask you to look at that handout and find um, the handout that's up on the screen right now. What we've done is to highlight the specific that's required for those credits. And so you can see for math, you've got to have three credits. Um, what we've asked our math teachers to do, and I think you all have like a bright orange, like a hunting orange slip that recommends the, the math class. We would like you to input that math class. If you were not there when your math teacher shared that information, please ask them 
what they recommend you register for and then please register for that math class. In social studies, if you look at the highlighted for 11th grade, you have to have either 20th century, AP US history, or American studies. And I think your, um, hopefully your social studies teachers have talked to you about that, but American studies basically is a block it's a two period class pushed together that includes the credits for both 20th century um, and your English 11 credit. So you could select that and it would fulfill your social studies and your English 11 um, requirements. In science, you can see highlighted most students will take chemistry or honors chemistry. Or if you have honors chemistry this year, many students will go into AP bio. Um, you could also choose a regular bio if you decided you weren't going into that career cluster after high school. Um, you could also take biology if you hadn't taken that as a 10th grader. Um, moving on to the English, you can see all students are AP Lang, or again, going back to that combined black class American studies, which will fulfill social studies and English. And then FIAD, you have to look at, you need another half a credit because you've probably earned one in ninth grade and in 10th grade with your fit for life. You could take that either in um, 11th grade or 12th grade, wherever it fits best into your schedule. If you did not take fit for life um, or you didn't pass it, then you're gonna need to take fit for life as an 11th grader because that is a requirement. And then not highlighted, you can see health. If you did not take health this year, you'll need to get that in either 11th or 12th grade, either year is fine. And then your financial literacy, you can see the options on your handout that also could be taken in 11th or 12th grade. And again, you can see those um, requirements in your infinite campus academic plan. So once you know what the uh, high school graduation requirements are. We're asking you if you're considering a two or a four year college after graduation, that some colleges require more than what is high school graduation required. The best thing to do for that is to go, um, whatever colleges you're looking at, go to that website and type in freshman admission requirements, and you're gonna see a listing if they require four years of math, What you might see, uh, what varies the most from college is a world language requirement, which is required in some colleges, but not all colleges. You might also see that some colleges require a fine arts requirement. And again, we ask that students, um, because it's so individualized, students are looking at the website and before you make your course selections, you know what you have to have for potentially going to um, certain colleges you've identified. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. I guess I would add that the more competitive colleges like Madison and Twin Cities, they do require more rigorous coursework and the competition for admission is higher. And so, um, you know, with those more competitive ones, especially uh, be checking what the freshman admission requirements are. And again, any questions, you can shoot us an email on that stuff. Okay. Course selections. Okay, how do you know which courses you should take um, after you've met the requirements, after you understand what the college admissions are? You can go to um, the link that is posted here, or you could go to the Senior High website and click on Student Resources, and then you'll see a tab that says Course Selection 21-22. And on that link, you're going to see some department videos. Most importantly, you're going to see that course and career handbook. We don't print copies of that anymore. It's about 125 pages long. Uh, it's way too much to print. So we put it online. That is essential in reading course descriptions and understanding uh, what the prerequisites are. Um, before you can take a class. So up on the screen there, you should see how to get into that link. There's actually two options. You can either click on that student resources tab or on the left hand side, there's a, a little button. I think it's whitish that says uh, 
uh, course selection for 2021. You could click on that and it will take you to all of these resources. Um, especially interesting are the department videos that have been posted there and then um, course selection sheets, which you also have that in your packet. Um, the athletic course selection sheet is there, just all of the resources for scheduling. So if you get home and mom and dad ask you about something then and you don't have your uh, packet with you, you can just pull it up online. Okay. Um, what I personally like to direct students to do is take a look at the career clusters that you see up on the screen, which are also included in the front portion of that career handbook. Um, most sophomores are able to identify um, which clusters are not within their strength or their interest area. Usually they can cross off a couple. For me, it would be anything math related. Sorry, math teachers, if I have any math, I have one math ELT teacher there. Um, I, I knew as a high schooler, math was not my thing. I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, I wasn't good at it. And so when I would look at the clusters, I would cross off anything that had heavy math in. And then I would not take um, courses after I'd met the requirements in that career cluster because it just didn't fit my strengths and interests. Um, what's really cool about our course and career guidebook is the ones that you do not cross off, you can go to that cluster and you'll see a nice listing of courses that um, will expose you to um, careers in that area. So it's a really good way to kind of um, understand all of the course offerings, not just taking what your brother or sister took or what your friend took, but to be able to know what offerings are because we have just a fantastic offering of elective classes. Um, so check that out and that will help you fill in your schedule with uh, classes that you will probably be very good at and you'll enjoy very much and could potentially become um, workplace career for you or um, a major in college. Um, so again, go back to that uh, course and career handbook and take a look at those. So there's some other helpful information. I'm not gonna specifically go through these things, um, but if you have um, an interest or need to know information about any, those are also included in this uh, handbook. Um, what you see up there mostly is um, something for athletics. So if you think that you might be playing sports in college, there are some additional admission requirements and um, there'll be some admission, uh, additional athletic requirements that you wanna be aware of because you have to take certain classes and only certain classes meet um, requirements. That's all on the NCAA website. How to get there is in the handbook. And then the other offer, the other topics on there are really about academic enhancers. Um, so if you're looking to have a very rigorous transcript and wanna be competitive, you might wanna be taking some of the classes in there. And additionally, uh, we have many classes that offer certifications that will help you in the workplace um, upon gradu graduation. And you can identify which classes those are by looking on the page uh, posted on uh, the screen right now. So one of the things that I, uh, a trend that I love seeing right now is that we are recognizing the value and importance of, of workplace experiences and going into the workplace uh, field and finding your career right away. Um, in addition to college, um, we offer some, uh, some classes that help support you in that. The first one is a youth apprenticeship and that's a certification program where uh, mentoring and get paid and get high school credit. Um, and that is eligible to you um, next year as a junior. Um, so if you are looking to enhance your work experiences, um, what I would say with that is it's not, not anything you can register on the course selection sheet, but if you're interested in youth apprenticeship, email your school counselor and we'll contact you with Ms. Matthew, who can kind of go through um, if you have a current job, if that job meets the criteria for youth apprenticeship, um, or if you want to pursue a job and find something. So for example, I had a student who was interested possibly in um, a pharmacist technician and we do have youth apprenticeships in that. And so we're connecting her with local uh, pharmacies and she's gonna start working there and she'll end up with a certification. It'll help her decide if that's something she wants to go into 
out of high school. Also looking ahead is, which is on the course selection sheet for 12th graders only, so it doesn't apply to you, but I want you guys to know ahead of time that this is an option are our internships. And so if you have a job in um, uh, the, the family and consumer sciences field or the technology, uh, technology education field, you could uh, have, um, you'd have a class uh, one period of the day, and then you could be released for those work experiences and you can earn high school credit. Um, now, that only works if you're close to that 23.5 credits. So you've got to keep earning credit. Um, leaving early doesn't really fit because you haven't met the requirements. So those are some really helpful things for uh, work experiences. Okay, so our teachers here at DC Everest are so phenomenal that they um, have been reflecting on the needs of our students and what courses could we offer that might better meet the need to help you be more college and career ready, uh, career ready especially, what's relevant. You can see a listing of the new courses that we're trying to, well, we are going to offer if we can get kids to sign up for them. Um, what I would recommend with that is the math classes, always defer to your math teacher and the other classes, talk to your current teacher in that department, say, hey, what's this chemistry in the community about? Is that a better fit for me than chemistry? Um, and see what they have to say. They have a wonderful firsthand knowledge about these offerings. Um, you also have to take a peek at the uh, prerequisites for these, and we'll get to that in just a minute, but um, we have to just make sure that you guys are eligible for them as 11th graders, which some of you will be. Okay, we are getting there. We're pretty close here. So in summary, please, please, please be responsible with scheduling and give this some attention. Think about your academic needs. You know, what do you need to do to have in high school to support what you want to do after graduation? What are your learning styles? Um, and then also, what are your social emotional needs based on um, what you put together? This is your plan. It's going to be you five days a week. So we want you to make sure that the courses you pick now will work for you when we start next September. And again, you see that date of April 30th again, no changes are allowed after April 30th. So think about the big picture and what you want your 11th grade year to look and feel like as you're selecting these courses. Okay, this is another handout that's in your packet and it's really to help you organize what does the day actually going to look like you will be able to pick up to seven classes. So if you guys have that handout, if you want to flip to that right now, um, we're going to be offering, you can take up to seven classes next year. One of the mistakes we see students making is uh, when we have full year classes, you have to enter them as separate semesters. It's a little confusing, but it's just the way we run our schedule. So for example, English 10, you can see at the top, you have to fill in both semesters. So there's an English ENG07 S1, and then you'll also see ENG07 S2. You have to enter both of those separately. And if you don't, you'd only you would not be meeting graduation requirements. So this planning worksheet should help you fill in and, and pay special attention to uh, full year classes, because that should run across the entire line, and then also let you see if you have any open spots for semesterized classes. At the top, you can see if this student selected Art 01, Art Foundations, you can see that in the opposite semester, um, you would still be able to find room to fit an elective in. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the way those courses are gonna fall. Um, our administration steps in and they decide uh, with the computer basically where do those classes fall, but it lets you see that you've picked a full schedule or not a full schedule with that, okay? So after I'm done with the presentation, this would be a, um, one of your go-to sheets to start filling in. You will not need to hand this in. Um, it's for your purposes only. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that if you were to take seven credits, um, when you're inputting the courses into Infinite Campus, that would total 28 units. Unfortunately, Campus doesn't tally credits, 
they tally them as units. If you're taking six and a half credits, which would mean one semester you have open for a study hall, then you would total 26 units. Um, we do not want you to put in um, the request for a study hall if you we want to let that computer pick uh, where it's going to fall. Now, if you decide you um, are only going to take six credits, which you can next year, that would and you want a full year study hall, we need you to put in study hall semester one and study hall semester two. That will guarantee that the study hall falls in each semester and not two study halls in one semester, which wouldn't be which wouldn't be good for you. So um, again, be thinking about those units. That stuff can be a little confusing and I, I wish it would calculate as credits, but it doesn't. Um, almost done here. Okay, um, every year, every year we get a few students a week in, two weeks into the semester and they've changed their mind and they don't wanna take a certain course. Uh, we want to make sure that all students understand because this is tied to our, um, you know, our teacher FTE and the number of courses that we take based on how many kids want it. You may only make a request to change a course after April 30th for the reasons listed on the screen. So, for example, a medical concern came up that you didn't know about. Um, for example, there is an error with the computer, not with your data entry, because you can fix that in the verification um, side. Um, or if you ended up with two study halls in one semester. Um, so basically the reasons for changing a class are very limited. If you um, are firm in your decision that you want to drop a class, um, you would have to drop that with what we call a withdrawal failure, a WF. And what that means is it goes on your transcript as WF and it calculates into your GPA um, as an F. So again, this is another thing to make sure because you want to have a, a, a rigorous, a strong GPA that um, you have selected the courses that fit your strengths and you've met the requirements. Um, we haven't included this discussion in the past. We thought it was helpful because we've had quite a few kids make requests to to add or drop. The other thing with trying to add a class after that April 30th date, chances are it could be full. Um, our administration runs classes, you know, if 30 kids sign up for it, that's gonna be one section. Um, so literally there is no room, could be no room for you to add classes. All the more reasons for you to uh, pay attention to this and take your time on that so that you can get the courses you want. Um, Let's see. Oh, we're still. Yeah, we're. I gotta get going here. Sorry. Um, so again, the resources on our on the student senior high website, and then talk with your teachers and talk with parents. You can talk with friends too, but also follow some other uh, resources. Okay, I'm gonna hop back here to this one. I missed a few slides here. Just to give you a general idea of what the uh, school day is going to look like next year, we are going to be five days in person. Um, we are going to have a 30 minute daily ELT. Um, this year, you did not have an ELT. We are going to put that back in next year. Most students will register for six to seven credits. Now, the reason we wanted to share that there will be an ELT, is some students will think that that's enough time um, to use for study hall, and then they'll take that seventh credit because they want to get classes in. Some students will think, boy, I don't think I should take seven credits because 30 minutes a day of study hall is just not enough for me. So I'm going to take that study hall. Um, but for many students, 30 minutes a day would be enough for study hall. And you could take seven credits and you can get um, um, the extra elective classes in or um, the extra classes in that you want to. Uh, we talked about the math thing and then just a little description there about your study halls um, so you can see what the unit should add up to okay and the last one then is the course selection form that is also in your packet if you could um, turn to that handout and i just want to highlight a few things 
We do want to collect these courses, so please circle the courses that you want. And then my suggestion is uh, make sure you've met the graduation requirements and then explore the career clusters. Circle what you want and then write them in on uh, the course request worksheet so you can see how it fills up your day. Pay special attention to any of the classes that have a P after them in parentheses. I know it's super tiny. <laughs> Um, we added more classes this year. If it has a P, that means it has a prerequisite, a class you had to have taken prior to signing up for that class. So, for example, Art Explorations 2D. If you looked in the course handbook, you would see that you must take Art Foundations prior to taking Art 2D. The only way you're going to know what class is the prerequisite is by going to that handbook. Or you could probably ask the classroom teacher. They would probably know um, or they pull out the handbook. Um, if you sign up for a class that has a prerequisite and you did not take the prerequisite, you're actually going to be removed from that class and we'll grab one of your alternates and put in. Um, so that's up to you to make sure you understand what the requirements are to take that class. The other one that's highlighted on your handout is um, English 11, for example. That's bolded. Any of the bolded classes on your course selection form are full year classes, and you have to. That says um, English 12, I think it is semester one, and then English 12 semester two. put both of those in. Um, so the bold is a reminder for you um, that you've got to put in both semesters. Now, also, you'll see what's different on there is where we have the header online. I talked about that earlier. Remember, you can take um, two online classes um, each semester. Um, what will happen then is during your seven period day, if you're taking two online classes, you'll have two periods that are open. You are not tied to a specific place for that. Um, you, you could leave school during that time. Um, but remember, we don't guarantee where those periods will fall, but you will not be um, required to uh, necessarily check into a specific classroom during that time. Um, but you can only take two of those a semester. Okay. You're also going to see on the course selection form, some of the classes have a little asterisk by them. That means um, it's a class that is either dual enrollment, AP can earn you some kind of college credit or special certification. Um, those, uh, if you're interested in what the LADA program is, it's an academic distinction. The description for that is in the course and career handbook. Um, so we'd ask you to take a peek at that. Um, the last thing on the course selection sheet, if you look at the back side, we do need you to enter in four additional alternate classes that would be considered in the event of a conflict. Um, only pick alternates that um, you are willing to live with because if there's a conflict, we're going to grab it and put it in without any consultation from you because we're telling you now, only put in the alternates that you're going to live with and actually be able to take and, and we're going to hold you to that. Um, the best thing to do for that is go back to those career cluster pages. You're going to see a listing of a ton of classes there. Um, you could use some of those uh, from that list in your career cluster, potential career cluster as alternates. Um, that would be a good thing to put in for that. Um, and again, we put those in anytime there's a conflict, unless it's a core required class. If it's a required class, we're going to call you down and say, hey, I'm sorry, you're going to have to make a choice between you know, these two or potentially next year take an online class so that clears up any conflict so you can still get all the classes that you need. Okay, I think that covers just about everything. So I'm going to ask you to um, unmute if you have any questions. If there aren't any questions in the ELT, you can log off and actually start to enter. Um, enter your course request. So in your packet, but I'm sure you guys remember how to do that. Okay, any questions? Okay, so I see one question from Ms. Filtz, and her question was, 
Study hall is popping up as two units. Is that correct? Yes. Um, each semester class is two units. Um, so if you wanted a full year study hall, you would end up with four units. And units are not the same as credits. That's what makes it so confusing. <laughs> units are not the same as credits. But teachers and students in general, um, each course that you enter for a semester equals two units. A full year of English would equal four units, but really only one credit because each semester class is only a half a credit. Super confusing. The computer, I believe, will not allow students to register for more than 28 units. Um, oh, and the other thing about alternates, make sure that when you're putting your alternates in, it doesn't matter first preference, second preference, just tag it as an A. Um, you'll be able to say, um, you'll be able to put alternate in there and then it, that will not calculate into your units. Okay, I got another question coming in. Photo one is not popping up in Infinite Campus, but is listed on the sheet. Okay. Um, so let me check on that, Mr. Shrimp. Um, it could just be that we didn't click that one to be requested. I will have Mrs. Barwick double check on it and later today it will be available. Let me just write that one down. So photo one. Okay. Um, you just need to register an infinite campus by 412, but yes, that is correct, Mr. Weninger. Um, have everything in by the 12th, and then we're going to check those sheets on the 13th. Okay. And then Mrs. Larson, American Studies is not popping up in IC in either English or Social Studies. Um, so for American Studies, try, so if you put in a, for American Studies, try SOCH 45 S1 and SOCH 45 S2. That will register students for English. They only need to enter that one course number. Okay, I will check on that one. That's a possible, that's a tricky class. Um, so students, if you wanna register for that American Studies, uh, check, check back later today. We'll get that fixed. Thank you for that feedback. Just keeping a list here. Okay. Um, Mrs. Phil, child development and careers with children are two courses that don't have a course description. What is the difference or where can we find the differences? When clicking on the course, it pops up as no description. Hmm. Child development and careers. Mrs. Filtz, is that the course number FACE 07? Aren't sure. Aren't sure. Yeah, we don't have yeah, it up. We right. don't have it up right. Okay. I would have to child development, I don't see listed on the course selection sheet. Careers with kids is listed on the course selection sheet. And I would think that one does have a description because that's been around forever. It's possible if it doesn't have a description that that's an EVA course um, and should not be taken. Students can only take the courses that are listed on the course selection sheet. They may have, they will have access to other courses when they start to type in numbers. Um, but only they can only enter what is on the sheet.
That sounds good, Mrs. Filtz. Okay, I think um, because class ends at 46, we're pretty close. I'm gonna end the meeting. Um, and again, touch base with your counselor via email or schedule an appointment, talk to your teachers, um, have fun exploring the awesome classes that we offer here. It's an exciting time for us. Um, let us know if you need any help and thank you for joining everybody.